Hi folks, I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Grand Atlantic physical therapist. We're the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, Brad, we're gonna go over seven signs you might have sleep apnea and what to do about it. We don't want to just talk about things, we want to give solutions. Exactly, Bob. And in education as well. Yeah, and the thing about sleep apnea, it's very, very common. They they estimate approximately 22 million adults in America alone. And they think that it's an estimated 80% are undiagnosed. So there's a lot of people there with it, and they don't even realize it. Sure. So that's why we want to go over the seven signs and symptoms. Right. So, so you'd be aware of that. That's uh, sleep apnea means you're not breathing properly when you sleep. Right. right. We'll talk about that a little okay, more. Right. Good. But right now, oh, if you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Join us on our social media platforms. We got them all covered, I think, most of them anyway. Instagram, that's the newest one we've been uh, going on. And Facebook.com, uh, uh, we're doing Bob and Brad. Yeah. We are doing a giveaway again. Oh, yeah, so we're doing a big giveaway. We're doing a sleep ovation mattress. Um, this mattress is fantastic for, especially if you're having any type of pain. Right, back pain, uh, hip pain. Is they're pain, just they yeah. they are developed for maximum comfort and minimal amount of uh, pressure pressure so yeah. you don't have pressure relief. Yep. So great. you just gotta go in. Uh, you'll see the details down below in on on Facebook or on YouTube. You, you'll see it also. Okay. So okay. All right. Seven signs. Let's talk about yeah, sleep apnea. Uh, like we said, very common, and it is characterized by we have frequent breaks or pauses in your breathing during sleep. And there's actually three types of sleep apnea. Sure. But we're not going to talk about them all. Oh, yeah. We're, well, just we're, gonna, they're, we're going to talk about the most common type, and that's an obstructive sleep apnea. Okay. And that's the type where, you know, yeah, the, the tongue or the throat closes and, and it causes a blockage and you're not getting air. Right. So, so I remember my, my father had that. My mother was very concerned. He would stop breathing. Exactly. It's like, and then all of a sudden you yeah. start again. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about the first most common sign, which I think almost everybody knows, is snoring. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you snore, it does not mean you have sleep apnea. I don't want you to panic. Sure. And, and also, if you don't snore, it doesn't mean you don't have it. I mean, you, you still might have sleep apnea, even if you aren't snoring. Okay. So if you have some of these other signs or symptoms, you may want to uh, pay attention. What are they, Bob? I'm, I mean, well, no more going on, but with the snoring, I'm not done with it. You know, generally, if the snoring is loud and disruptive, and, and nightly, there's a lot better chance at sleep I apnea. Now, I had a friend that came to visit us uh, at our cabin, and I, I just real quickly on the story, he was supposed to sleep in one of the private rooms because we knew he was a snorer. Oh, yeah. He falls asleep on the couch in the center where, I don't know, you've been there, Brad. Yeah. We got a loft up there, so there's like five, six people sleeping up there. It's probably resonating too. Oh, my head. God. I, I, it was a grizzly bear. I've never seen anything like it. I, I just... So I think he's on a sleep, uh, the, the CPAP Well, just, now. Well, if he comes over again, just give him one. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. We'll pass one out to him. So that's number one. Uh, number two, if you have uh, frequent breaks or pauses in your breathing, and this on uh, both of these, the snoring and the breaks, like you just talked about that your dad, right. you almost need to have someone in bed, you know, witnessing Monitoring, this. Monitoring, yeah. Yeah, you need to have your partner, uh, you know, knowing this. And usually, if you know most partners, they're willing to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> if I snore, my wife's saying, you snore all night. So, yeah. so you know, we hear about it. Yeah, we hear about it. So number three, uh, this is very obvious too. When you're, when you're, you know, having these frequent breaks where you're not, you're not breathing, you're not going to sleep well. You're not getting into REM sleep. So you're going to be tired, right? You don't get the oxygen, carbon dioxide exchange, which was what your body, I mean, that's what yeah, it desires, sleep, right? right? That you're, you're trying, your body's trying to rejuvenate for the next day and you don't get the fuel that oxygen fuel it needs. And you may not understand this. You say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting seven to nine hours of sleep and I'm, I'm still tired all day. So, right. you know, that's a sign. Number four, headaches. Um, you wake with a headache, you have less, less oxygen to the brain, sure. you know, with, with, with this type of situation. And, uh, you know, the blood vessels try to bring in more oxygen. So what do they do? They expand. And so you get oh, a vascular headache. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Sure. So, Right now, I want to just take a, a, a little bit of a break, and we're going to mention, you know, one of the things you can try for it, because uh, most people know the CPAP, which is the continuous positive airway pressure. Right. Uh, but a lot of people don't like them. Right. And that's the machine, and you know, the big unit, the big mass. Yeah. Up there. The tube that comes up and hooks to your face. It looks. Right. My father-in-law did not. Yeah. He would not use it. So you know, even if you do use that, you may want to go ahead and try the breather. 
Um, we, we've mentioned this before, we're very excited about it. It's a device for respiratory muscle training. Um, and basically you're training your respiratory muscles. It's like weightlifting. Right, it's exercising the muscles that really develop breathing. And the inspiratory muscles and the expiratory right. muscles. We're not the respiratory therapists, but we are physical therapists who understand strengthening. And that's why this makes so much sense to us is that it's literally strengthening the muscles that make you breathe and, and teach that and muscle. And we memory. see a lot of patients with oh, yeah. what we call OSA, right. obstructive sleep apnea. And this was developed by a respiratory therapist. She had like 38 years in the business. She's been around. They've, it was the number one trainer on the market. Okay. They've sold over a million of these. And then they redesigned it. They wanted to make it even better. I think they changed the mouthpiece a little bit. Um, we're not going to do it justice as far as... Um, showing you how to use it because they have really good videos on their website right and we'll put a link down below if you do you know use buy through our link you're gonna get a 20% discount and free shipping oh that's so, great it's a relatively inexpensive they device. are yeah, yeah so I mean um, so I they sent me some studies but I just didn't take their word for it Brad I also went on PubMed yeah. which is a great site if you want to look up studies uh, PubMed.com or .gov. It's a, a government agency, sure. and I found three studies that that showed that yes, respiratory muscle training um, d does actually help sleep apnea. Okay. So Great. if you t you know type in those two two phrases, you'll come probably to the same studies. There weren't that many. Okay. But there, there was three of them. So you know it helps reduce the number of, of arousals and awakenings. Yep. It helps reduce limb movement. Oh, oh so yeah, 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 yeah. flailing around. Sure, it reduces blood pressure. It uh, reduces apnea or hypopnea. Hy How do you say that? Hypoapnea. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, Brad. Well, don't worry about it, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you're your speech therapist. Anyway, low, br low breathing coming. In. Apnea is no breathing, yeah. no air coming in. Hypo would be low. Right. Air. I don't know. Yeah. And the last thing is, it does it. Uh, decreases the desaturation of REM sleep and non-REM sleep. So you're you're getting more oxygen during during, during those cycles. Sure. Just real quickly, uh, I just want to show you, you know, you're going to use it usually twice a day and for two sets of uh, 10. Uh, you do a set of 10 in the morning and a set of 10 at night. So you're saying a set of 10, one repetition is uh, breathing in oh, and no, exhale. Two sets of 10, I think, in the morning and two sets of 10 at night. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you, oh yeah, and you just mentioned the in and out. Right. You do diaphragmatic breathing. You really knew this because we talked about this before the yeah. video and it came out just like that. Yeah. Uh, you gotta... <laughs> so you're going to do diaphragmatic breathing where you actually breathe in through the nose and the, you don't, you're not excelling in Yeah, we don't want this. We want... You're expanding the belly. Brad demonstrates that really well. Now what's nice about the breather, it has six levels of, of of resistance for inhaling and five levels for, for uh, exhaling so you can actually set it differently for breathing in and breathing out and that just takes a little practice with it but you know by the time you get to the your tenth repetition you should feel like you've worked your your you know your breathing system a little bit and uh, right. you'll know after you, you play it after probably a couple of days you'll have it dialed right you can there. be on oxygen supplementary oxygen like and, and still use this you can be in a wheelchair that's what's nice about this I like about it sure um, you you put forth about 70% of your effort on this I mean you're not blowing as hard as you can sure and uh, you want to make sure you're not puffing out your cheeks because if you're puffing out your cheeks that means you're working too hard so did I cover most of the things Brad on I that? think so Bob let's, let's just run to show them yeah. so okay. you're going to go ask You're pumping out your cheeks, Brad. Sorry, Bob. I'm practicing. So you get a little feedback. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's my... Uh, am I You're doing really well on the breathing. Yeah. How's that look? I mean, I'm letting my stomach come out. <laughs> You're pumping out your cheeks. I'm getting them, Bob. Just, just relax. Relax. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on while you're working on it here. So number five, if you have increased blood pressure, it might be a sign of sleep apnea. Number six, if you're overweight, especially your neck circumference. They found this quite often, men with a thick neck over 17 inches and women with a neck over 16 inches, more apt to have that 
you know, the, the fatty stuff in the area that it's going to close down the right. airway. The physical interference. And number seven, if you're irritable, depressed, you have mood swings, um, you know, you're not getting enough sleep, that's going to, you know, that'll do it for me, I'll tell you. Yeah. Just take away my sleep and I become a bad boy. <laughs> so, so. Yep, I can imagine. Your wife would really attest to that. Yeah, huh? that's well, she probably would say the other things too, but we won't go into that, so. So hopefully that'll help you, uh, and uh, thanks for watching, and remember again, we got the giveaway right now. Oh, that's right, those are bad read. Yeah, there, there, one. That'll take care of my sleep apnea. There we go. Thanks.